So what we have to do is just look about what we would change next time, regardless if it's right or wrong, in your opinion. What is up, everyone, and welcome back to another F6 Weekly Vlog, where we've got a great vlog for you. We've got a Tuesday night game at Three Bridges, where we talk about something called Phantom Fouls, which is, as a referee, you'll give more non-decisions than you will decisions. So we talk about how you can be brave and bold in giving those decisions. As well as that, we've also got a competition for you guys to get involved in winning a year's free Ref6 Pro. So stay tuned to the end to find out how you can win that. But for now, I will see you on Monday evening for what will be match day minus one and how we get on with it. I will see you there. Good evening, everyone. So it is Monday night now and I've recovered uh, from Saturday's game. Um, very much looking forward to it. It should be a real sort of feisty game as well. So, so we have to be mentally prepared for those first 10 minutes are going to be crucial um, in terms of are they going to want to play football. So let's gear up. Sleep well tonight. Big sleep, and I'll catch you tomorrow for what will be match day. Let's go. Good morning, everyone. So it is 7.45, and I'm about to get ready to go to work. Um, in terms of today, it's going to be nice and simple. Pretty much walk uh, will be about lunchtime, just to stretch the legs, loosen up, uh, and then I'm going to cycle home, eat dinner, pack my kit bag, and get ready to go. Uh, like I said, it should be a bit tasty. I'm quite looking forward to it. Uh, and yeah, let's get ready to go. So, lunchtime. My legs feel good. Uh, it's been a nice, quite a good day at work in terms of just getting on with stuff, so nothing too stressful. stressful. Lunch was a pasta pot, but I was stir fry. So that's nice, nice and lots of carbs. And dinner is pasta, so very carb heavy. And yeah, now for the second part of the day, and I'll catch you when I've finished my cycle home from work. So, it is five past five, 35 minutes to go. I got home about quarter to five. Um, so I feel good, I feel calm. So I'm going to pack my kit bag, and this is what I'm bringing to an Ishmael League South game. We'll start up here, which is boots, batteries for the buzzer flags, water bottle, speaker, important. Always remember the speaker. Spare boots as well, nice. Box of tricks with whistle. This is my Capelli sports band, um, which I have. Basically, I love this as well. One, keeps sweat off, brilliant. Two, has my whistle on a lanyard, and three, has this little hidden pocket here, as you can see, which keeps my coin in because I'm fed up of losing coins. I think it's one of the best little purchases I've ever made. So I would recommend, it doesn't have to be Capelli, it could be another brand, but, you know, um, finding one sweatband with a little hole in it. I don't know why, revolutionary. Gloves uh, probably won't be for me, but in case my assistants need it, wash bag. Match top today is going to be the new kit, as you can see, it's the thing. Warm up stuff, under shorts, two pairs of match shorts, my true socks, which I'm probably going to wear, and Nike socks, just in case. It's about bringing spares, just in case things rip, it get muddy, you fall over, assistants don't bring anything. That's why. Under Armour's both got long sleeve and short sleeve today. Chewing gums, expenses cards. This was programmed for two, two games ago, so that will go over here in a box. Crime sheets. Pen. Bag. My lovely Castore bag, which I'm loving more and more every week. This is all the stuff. So let's pack this up and I will catch you for when I will eat my pre-match. Hello. So shout out to my dad uh, who's sort of put this meal together, which is great. So what it is, is it's mushroom pasta. Nice, massive bowl of pasta. Mushrooms, a little bit of cream, cheese, spinach as well. So this will keep me fueled up for the the duration of the game, really. As well as, you know, I've got my um, Hydra tabs and I've got my energy gels. So this will keep me going throughout the 90 minutes. I've got loads of time now. I've got about half an hour until I'm going to meet Red. So in terms of the rest of, like, pre-match, I can stay nice and chill. So that's enough of me. My pre-match playlist is here, um, which Red has uh, added a few songs to. But for now, I'm going to end it here and I will see you at the ground. Redmond. Let's have it. Tough game. First thoughts, I that was tough. That was tough, yeah. Two two tough two teams again. Tuesday night under the lights, bit bitty. Yeah, that is how I would describe that bitty. First half, I want your honest thoughts. 
Um, it was very much a basis of lots of off the ball stuff. It was trying to almost reel it back in and gain control. You see the half out really well, and it was a matter of second half puffing your chest out and going, right, how can I gain control of this game and put it back in my hands? The second half was definitely in your control, especially because the first 15 nailed everything. Chest was out, shoulders back. Yeah, yeah. And it was a lot stronger. So I think you definitely, by the end of it, have it had it at the right level. So yeah. it was good to see. I agree. And if we go a little bit deeper into the first half, because that's where a lot of problems occurred. But I think, like you say, there's that 15-minute period where there was a lot of off-the-ball stuff. It felt like I was a bit all over the place. But yeah. What did it look like from the outside? Yeah, first yeah. five minutes was fine. Yeah, yeah. Deci- decision for the one nil. Foul or no foul. You've got no foul. Again, you're right on it. But then the next 10 minutes was really bitty. Um, both sides, lots of contested stuff off the ball, off a lot of, yeah. lots of, a lot of real moaning, trying to get on top of you. The half time, it was like, box it up. What do I do well? Even better if. And then second half, because anyone can referee a first half of football, it's yeah. how, how you kind of close the game out. And it, again, he did. Again, there was no one coming, up, no one knocking on our change room door at the yeah, end of yeah, the game. Absolutely. There's, there's no one. Again, the, the only real questions were there was a penalty shout near the end. Again, you had a fantastic view of it. Yeah, right on top of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And like you said, no one was banging down our doors. No one's talking about us after the game. So, so far, you know, realistically, it's all good. Um, it's just gritty. It makes it, you come off the game drained, don't you? Like, oh. Yeah. But yeah, well done today, mate. Top man. Cheers. I'm going to have a pancake. What about you? Can't stand them. <laughs> <laughs> so, back at Ref 6 HQ after a couple of days. You know, these Tuesday night games are always a bit strange in terms of analysis, preparing for the next game. But, what we're going to talk about today is obviously the competition that we set at the start of the video, but that's going to be in a little bit, uh, as well as we're going to go through my stats and these things we call phantom fouls. Because as a referee, you give more non-decisions than you actually give decisions. So we're going to talk about you know, being confident in giving these non-decisions. But before we go into that, we get a lot of questions about how we sort of use Ref6 and work with Ref6 ourselves. So when we get to the ground, we get given team sheets about an hour before and we usually write these in a little book but what I don't I don't do that because I've got rubbish handwriting and during that game it rains so if it rains and it gets smudged and then you can't write on the piece of paper so I put it into ref six through the team sheet um, section and then what this enables me to do is it means it's all on my watch and this also helps with my communication with the players as well because if I'm cautioning a player then I can see their name and number and then I can use their first name you know to, when talking to them so it feels a lot more comfortable with me um, and then I can have a better relationship with them going forward as well and it keeps them nice and calm so those kind of things that we don't think about um, when using you know our, our tools that we use as referees that can help us uh, with our player management. But to the game itself, um, looking at my ref six stats, I ran 9.4k, which is about average at the moment. And we can see finally that we're starting to get into these wider areas. The game was played a lot in the middle, um, as you can see this big red splodge here. But we are getting wider into these areas. That means I'm keeping the ball between me and my assistant, and I'm starting to get more of an angle on decisions. Uh, but coming up, uh, I also didn't get one. Looking at the sprints as well, very condensed, quite a few of them as well. Two big red ones as well. So let me know in the comments how many like red sprints you average a game as well. I'm averaging about two at the moment, uh, which is nice. It means I can hit the top speeds as well. And heart rate zones, I was very high in heart rate as well. Um, so that means obviously I was quite tired. Yesterday being the Wednesday and Thursday being today, um, you know, it's finally starting to feel normal again and train normally. So we were lucky enough to get the footage today. It was through VO, so this is how we have to look at it. And the first clip we're going to look at is something a bit strange. Now, before we analyse our clips, we have to be careful that the decision isn't always the end result. Um, regardless if it's right or wrong, you can always take learnings from it um, because you know, you can't change the decision now. You can only change your process going forward. So what we have to do is just look about what we would change next time, regardless if it's right or wrong, in your opinion. So this first one comes from, which does lead to a goal, and it's this phantom foul we're talking about. So if we just watch it through here, Seven Oaks are in blue, playing out the back. Uh, three Bridges are in orange. And then there's a little bit of contact here and not enough for me, I don't think, and obviously... It goes on and scores, which makes everything a little bit more hard work for you. So if we pause the point of contact here, 
I don't think there's enough contact here for the player to go down. I think he's taken a heavy touch. He's not in control of the ball, and I think he wants to go down and win a soft free kick. I wanted to let them play. I wanted the game to flow. They wanted a physical game. That's the decision out of the way. The next thing we have to talk about is my positioning. As we can see, we spoke about it last week at Walton and Hersham, is looking down the barrel of the gun, and that's exactly what I'm doing here. So I can only realistically see a tiny bit of the blue player and more of the yellow player because the yellow player is um, directly in my eyesight. Now, we can change this by taking two or three steps to the left and then I've got an angle of if I can see a shirt pull, if I can, because at the moment all I can see is a trip, um, and taking two steps to the left or to the right, uh, recommend left because that means you're keeping the ball between you and your assistant, means that you have more of an angle and more information to give when you give the free kick because you've just got to basically blow the whistle and say, this is why I'm giving it, um, because I've seen this, this, this and this, and then the players don't really have too much to argue about. So that's the decision here. I think I've got it right. Let me know in the comments what you think. Um, obviously, it's a big decision that leads to a goal, but I think that there's not enough contact, and something we say is expected contact in football. Um, it's not enough to be a free kick, in my opinion. But positioning-wise, I can be in a better position um, to allow me to sell the decision more. The second decision we have is a lot of what you will deal with at Sunday League as well and lower level is ball in the air. So you'll get a lot for people complaining about pushes and pulls in the air and that is probably going to make up the majority of your non-decisions. So here we are, we can see me here looking at the drop zone which is important because if there's a tip to take out of this is a, the ball will never commit an offence and it will never commit offence in the air as well. So make sure you can see where the ball is, take a quick look up, but then look at the players because that's where the offence is going to take place. And as you can see, I've had a quick look up and then I look straight across. So if we look here, my eyesight, the ball is somewhere up here, but my eyesight is straight on these two players here. So they're going to be jostling, they're going to be trying to hold each other. So what we have to do is look at these two players. And again, we're talking about angle, is that I'm not directly in front of it, I've got that angle so I can see both players and more of what's going on. And, you know, here we are again, slightly at an angle. They're both jostling, pulling and pulling, pushing and pulling each other. And what they're going to do is one of them is going to appeal for a foul. Again, you can just see the ball in frame now and you can see my eyes are locked on these two players. And that is really important when looking at aerial challenges. It's not what ball watching. I've been caught on that a couple of times earlier on in the season and I've spent a lot of time looking up, yeah, seeing where the ball is, working out the drop zone and then like honing in on the two players because then you can see everything. And then, yeah, see, complaining for a push in the back. So they're the kinds of things that we have to look for. And the third and final clip, ball is on a quick break. So they're both shoulder to shoulder. And again, there's this phrase that we use, which is uh, coined from my podcast host, Dan Derso, is um, expected footballing contact. If a player goes down, it's ne not necessarily a foul. And it, you know, players can jostle. Which, I mean, you can never win in these situations sometimes. Um, and what we have to do is look at, you know, th they're going down. We'll rewind it five seconds. And we can see my positioning. I'm, you know, a little bit on the move there. It's shoulder to shoulder. And how do we communicate this? If we can tell them to get up, we can cut the grass, which I would only recommend in big decisions, you know, when you've got to be big and bold and cut the grass, um, as well as you can just tell the players, no, you don't need to use hand signals. You can say, get up, no foul for me, too soft, shoulder to shoulder. Say exactly what you see um, as you're thinking it, because then the players can hear you um, and what's going on through your head. Um, but again, angle and position is massively important here. So if we rewind it, I'm at that slightly to the left. If, in all honesty, I'd probably want to be a couple of steps backwards. I'm a little bit too close to play because as the ball comes out, I've got a dart out of the way um, and we don't really like that. So a couple of steps backwards would put me in the optimal position. But in terms of angle, I'm in a better position than I was at the start uh, on, in the first clip. But that's all my clips for the game. You know, it was a very gritty game, as we said, me and Red said. Um, so there are a lot of non-decisions to make and that's important. Uh, but... Moving on to the competition, you have a chance to win a year's free Ref6 Pro from us 
Um, all you've got to do is send in your clips of your decisions, be big and brave, and we're not going to dig you out. What we're going to do is look at them and see how we can take good clips and make them great. Um, and how you can do that is send us your clips to john at ref6.com or send them to us via social media. And the winner are the people that we pick uh, to analyze the clips will get a free Ref6 subscription for the year. So that's how you win the competition. I look forward to seeing your clips as well. Like I said, it's not about digging you out. It's about learning and how we can improve. Uh, I'm not going to be like, this is rubbish, this is this. I'm going to do exactly what I do in my analysis. Is We have good bits and we have development areas and how can we take good clips into great clips. So don't be scared. Be brave, be bold, just like you are on the football pitch. But that's everything in the vlog. Uh, please like and subscribe and I will see you at the next Ref6 weekly vlog.